Let's do this. Let's do this. Well, they were asking questions, actually. They wanted career advice. Oh, um, so we'll, I'll come back to your question and I'll see if there's anybody else. So anyone want to ask Lenny is this anything? Q &A? Is this like a Q&A Yeah. Thing? And well, you wanted to hang out and just... Yeah, because I think let's, give the, let's make it practical what you need to, to get ahead in this industry. Okay, right. Now, you're not allowed to be grumpy. You're not allowed to be <laughs> negative. You just need to ask loads of questions because we're only here for a short time. Yeah. I would hate it if you left and went, oh, no, I didn't ask him about that thing, about that thing. So you've got to ask questions. So who wants to start? Both of you, what is your proudest moment in your career? Well, that comes back to your question. As she was asking earlier about the Nelson Mandela 90th birthday party, um, it, for me, was definitely hosting. Uh, the Nelson, Man Nelson Mandela's 90th birthday party. Um, I wasn't involved with the organising, thank God. I just had to turn up on stage. Um, but it was amazing and it was one of the last times where he was actually healthy enough to sort of speak publicly. Um, and we all got to spend a lot of time with him ahead of time while he was in London. Um, and he was just a phenomenal man and it was just beautiful for all those people to come together to celebrate him while he was alive to, to enjoy it and experience it. So it's pretty cool. Um, I think um, the comic relief we did oh, at yeah. the London Palladium where we announced that we'd raised over a billion pounds. Wow. I don't know what it is about that particular night because we've done comic relief's really weird. We, we've sort of got to a thing where there's a standard and as long as we hit that standard, we kind of were happy. Yeah. And it was a, after, it was a night of, we were in the Palladium, we were, Tricky in a, in a theatre doing mm. a TV show because you, you get what you get, you know, you're shooting that way. Yeah. And so we're trying to use the stalls and maybe outside, and, but mainly you're stuck with the cameras looking that Just way. Just on the stage. On the stage. Yeah. But we did sketches and we did stand up and I did performed on the night and I, I really enjoyed that because I hadn't done stand up for ages and Russell Brand was on and all these, Trevor Noel was on and he was wonderful and it was quite naughty and irreverent. And then there was this point when we realised we'd raised over a billion pounds. We announced it, and the place went nuts. Oh my god! So it was to me that was one of the most exciting live experiences mm. I've ever had. And the other one was Mandela Day. Of course, yeah. The Mandela Day when he was there. Yeah, when he was which there. Was the thing at Wembley Stadium, in front of ninety-six thousand people, yeah. and Mandela was in the audience. He wasn't there at the first one. He managed to drag himself to the second one. <laughs> and um, we were on stage, it was me and Denzel Washington. As you do. Hosting. <laughs> and um, we kept looking up at Mandela and just wondering if he'd fallen asleep when Neil Young was on. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but he was great. And then we all met him afterwards and I, I got to meet him like you did. And I just, when you see Mandela, you, my diva they call him. Yes. He's, he's beautiful. He's beautiful, and then, yeah. When you get close, there were all these wrinkles, little tiny wrinkles in his face and you realise the toll. Yeah, the pressure. The, the pressure and yeah. the toll of the imprisonment. You realise what it had, how it had affected him. And what it had taken well, from so him, yeah. He was so beautiful, he was so kind of generous and kind and... Um, and went, funny. And funny, and I went yeah. to Oliver Tambo's house afterwards. Oh, you did? Nice. For the after, there was an after party. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't an R. Kelly type thing, it was just... Oh, oh yeah. It was just, yeah. <laughs> It was just, it was a Mandela ANC after party. It was very, there were drinks and snacks, okay? And there was a queue out the street when we arrived and I didn't know what the queue was for. What was it for? It was to have a picture taken with Mandela. Well, of course, There yeah. were all these black people lying yeah. about his... <laughs> when do I get to meet him? Yeah. And then I got to have my picture taken and um, he, he sort of shook my hand and did the picture. But he, you could tell that this had been a long night and he didn't really want to do much more mm. but he recognized me from the stage and he mm. was cool and he he's smiled. Like, thank you and then for and then for quite a long time my daughter thought it was her granddad <laughs> <laughs> the picture was over her bed yeah. for ages and was like, my granddad well, yes it is to see granddad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyone else who else Uh, in terms of drama what would you say is the best way to get into television drama and starting out well, Lenny has to. I'd say it's it. really tough. Um, it's a tough environment. I would say try and attach yourself to a production company, mm. be a runner or an intern or something. Yeah. Um, I, I think it, angle your training towards that. I mean, interestingly, there's no money in being a runner, and it's very geared towards middle class kids, rich kids who can 
sleep on their in their own bedroom and food, in the, food in the fridge, work yeah. for free. It's a very unfair, unfairly skewed business. But if you write, it's good. If you can write something and get it to somebody who can read it and go, "Wow, you're great." If you've got if you've got anybody in the industry who's a friend of a friend or a cousin or something that can give you a little nudge Legging, or a leg up yeah. or something, but I would say it's real difficult. And um, with scripts, write something, win an award, that gets you noticed. Do what you're doing now, you know, go on the radio, hustle, um, do a blog, you know. Short story, short write films. Shorts, write, make yeah. short films with yeah. your mates. Do things that get attention. And you've mm. got the internet now, so it means you can make something, it can be you talking to a camera and you can upload it. But to get into a big production company like Endemol or Fremantle, you're gonna need to be qualified, recommended, and um, jump through some hoops. Yep. It's hard. Mm. Yeah, it's hard. So then with saying that, would you say being independent would be useful then? Would Pardon? You being would independent? you say that being independent, you writing your own scripts and doing your own directing and films, would you say that would be better than trying to find someone else to do it for you? Not better, different. Just do both, really. Do both. I mean, yeah. there's, a, there's, a, there's an official way of doing it. I will go to drama school. I will study to be a first AD. And there's a bandulu ragamuffin way to do it. Do you know what? Me and my, pal, me and my pals are going to just get together and make a movie. Yeah. I know people who do that. The guys who did Blair Witch Product didn't wait to be asked to no. make the Blair Witch Product. Yeah. They just had a great idea and just went and made it. Yeah. So, I mean, I think Spike, you know, Spike Milligan, Spike Milligan, Spike Lee went to New York Film School mm. and made um, Joe's Barbershop in bed -Stuy, We Cut Heads as his student film. So you got facilities here. You could teeth cameras and make something. <laughs> so I would start, I would say, utilize what you've got. And with, with all of this, is how much money have I got in my pocket? Who am I, look at, your, look at the people around you. You guys are collaborators now. Mm. You, are all in the, you are all in the same boat. Start talking to each other and get excited and passionate about what you want to make, how you want to make it. If you've written something, so I've made this thing, it's only two pages long. Can we go and shoot this now? Yep. We've, got, we've got premises, can I, can I come to your bedroom and shoot this thing or can I go in the canteen? Will they let me shoot in the canteen? Can we do it on the down low in the canteen? <laughs> you know, but all of this is down low, down low ragamuffin style. I'm gonna get this done by any means necessary. Mm. If you wanna get in the business and get noticed, I'm afraid you're gonna have to do that because it's a lockout for a lot of the big companies. Yeah. And even with, a, even with a black independent company run by me, I find it really tough. Yeah, still to this day, yeah, with because, everything that you've already achieved. Because they say you're pushing against an open door, but my point, and I do have one, is if it's open, what am I pushing against? And why am I having to push? Why am I having to push? Yeah. You know, the door is not open. We are not pushing against an open door. So listen, if you're brilliant, they will find you. But let them make some stuff so they can find you. Write yeah. something, film something, shoot something, perform something. Do something that gets a million likes. They're going to notice you then. Look at Joe Sugg. He was on Strictly Come Dancing. Who the hell is he? I have no idea who the guy is. He's got 8 million followers. Who's Joe Jesus Sugg? Jesus had 12 followers. Yeah, and he's got 8 million. This guy's got 8 million followers. He ain't walked on no water. What, what, did, what did Joe Sugg do? I don't know what Joe Sugg does. What was, it? was he in a podcast? He's a band? blogger. No, he's a blogger. He was? He's a YouTuber. He's a YouTuber. Oh my God. And he does stuff. He, he does sponsored stunts and pranks and stuff. Who are Eight you? Eight million followers. Wow. Wow. Or, can... or Michael Dapper. Yeah, man. Same yeah. thing. Yeah. Man's not hot. Man's not hot. Yeah, yeah. He has make to do it Make little things. Yeah. Don't think in terms of, listen, Jeff Katzenberg is doing a thing now. He's raised a billion and a half pounds. Jeff Katzenberg used to be at DreamWorks and Disney. Yep. He made The Lion King. Yep. He, he had that amazing run of movies, Beauty and the Beast. Lion King, Aladdin, and he was in charge. He's left DreamWorks now, and he's formed a company called Quibi, and their thing is they're gonna make 10-minute dramas or comedies that will eventually join up and mm. become a 90-minute entertainment, which they will then either show commercially or on TV or something. 10-minute dramas. He's raised a billion and a half pounds to do that. That's ridiculous. He's seeing everybody. He's talking to everybody. I'm not saying you should go and pitch to, pitch to Jeff Katzenberg. But what, what I'm saying is the world is changing. People are watching. Everybody's watching things on their phone. Yeah. You go on the bus or on the train. People are watching Luther on their phone yeah. for ten minutes and then going to work or yeah. going to college or something. Yeah. So think in terms of short form. Yeah. Even if it's one joke, fifteen seconds, or 
a dramatic scene of you talking to your friend with a big turning point in the middle that pe where people go, God. Can't what? believe that happened. Oh, I can't yeah. believe that happened. I wonder what happens next. Yeah. Talking about drama, I wonder what happens next. Yeah. I want the next. I want the next one. Yeah. You know, make one thing and see how many likes you get and see if they want to see what happens next. Then you've got to write it, cast it, shoot it, upload it again. And my Miss Virginia, mm -hmm. um, I remember first watching you on Your Face or Mine mm -hmm. with um, Jimmy Carr. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask you, like, how was it presenting like such a show back then and do you still keep in touch with him at all? Okay, um, it was such a fun show to do. We did a lot of seasons. I mean, that show lasted a long time. I think we did probably about eight or nine seasons. Like a, a how lot many episodes of shows. is that? Um, and it was... Was it ten third? per season? No, no, back then they used to do like 30 shows per season. Wow. I mean, not like now, you get six shows per season. But yeah, it was like 30 shows per season. Um, and we would film over like a period of three months and we'd film like four shows a day, so we'd be exhausted by the end of it. But, but you it, got paid, right? Very well. You got pizzaed. Uh, I got pizzaed very well. And it was so much fun. I mean, we, we were the the cause of many breakups, but but it was a great show to do. Uh, yeah, still speak to Jimmy. I'm much closer with Vernon, and I mean, Vernon and I are very close, uh, and still are. Um, but yeah, it was a great show to do. And I think actually, it was one of those shows where it was really ahead of its time. If it had <coughs> been now with um, Tinder and all of those things, it could easily have actually become a sort of social media platform off the back of it. But yeah, yeah it was a great show. Um, my question is for you, like, I want to be entertainment reporter in the future, and with you having like over 20 years experience in that industry, how do you mm. think, well, what tips do you have for me to go about getting well, that? Well, I think it's like what Lenny said, do it. I think the thing is, the thing, the whole industry is changing. So in my day, you had to go through gatekeepers. Yeah. So you had to have somebody in the industry see you like you give you a job. Whereas now you don't, now you can do it yourself and you can find an audience. So I think if it's something that you really want to do, I would start, what a lot of the kids are doing now is if you set up a blog and you, or a video site, something, you get enough likes. Now the film companies are allowing like little bloggers to now come and actually interview big Hollywood A-list stars. And particularly if you have a very specific demographic that they can't easily access. So to be really sort of um, prescriptive and really think about who it is you want to target and make your entity focus on them. And you'll be surprised. Next thing you know, Paramount, Fox, Searchlight, Warner Brothers, whatever, allowing you to come to all the big junkets and stuff to interview celebs. I'd say vote your passion as well. Whatever you're passionate about, mm. focus on that and you'll find your audience. Yeah. Um, I was at... Um, I'm part of a big conglomerate called Endemol. Yes. And at the last big meet, at the last big session we had, we, they have all day sessions where they talk about what they're doing and everything. Mm. They had five people from the inter from YouTube. But they did. They call them influencers. Yeah. Okay. And, they, and yeah. They, were, they were talking to all these people. Telling like, you what to do. Telling, the, telling the, the, the broadcasters what to do. Yeah. How to do it. How to get their audience. <laughs> You're not doing it right. So you, if you if you want to be an influencer. Be passionate about what you're doing and really nail it. Really find your audience, nail it, generate your audience, and you'll see they'll come to you. Yeah, you'd be surprised. And, and, it's, and if you get your audience, and then it doesn't even have to be a really big audience. It just has to be a really targeted audience. Like, well, can you gal them? I, I think, gal, yeah, gal them a bit. Yeah. Um, but um, Jack's gap year, did you see that? What is that? It's Andy Harris's sons. Who are twin boys, very good looking boys. Who's Andy Harris? He's, uh, he's, uh, he's, he owns Left Bank Pictures, who make The Crown. Oh, darling, of course. Um, <laughs> anyway, Jack's Gap Year, these two guys went off on their Gap Year and they went and shot all these weird stunts, jumping, bungee jumping, and you know, weird yeah. stunts that young boys do. Yeah. They're like 18, 19, quite good looking. They've got like 9 million followers or something. <gasps> and London TV studios, ITV, offered them a corner office and said you can make anything you want. You know what those guys said? No thanks. No. Yeah, because they don't need it. No, they Spon don't need they got sponsorship. it. Sponsorship. Sponsorship. They they're don't making need, they way don't need more to have money. A corner office yeah. At London, London Television. They're, yeah. They're already making enough to live on. Yeah. They're getting their wages paid. What do they need to go and be? Yeah. A, be have it pulling their hair out working yep. for a TV company. They'll go straight to Netflix. Yep. And on that bombshell. Yeah. <laughs> is that useful?